Peace, y'all. Um, I like to read my thoughts, or I like to listen to my thoughts sometimes, record myself. It's like a little practice thing, and I'm at work right now. I take a little break, so just wanted to touch down um, the magazine that most of you conscious people should know called the Parabola. It's the magazine called Parabola. Um, spring 2016. They do four issues a year representative of the four seasons, four watches, uh, four sons of Heru, four gospels, four disciples, uh, 444, which is none other than 1111, and I can go on and on. So uh, this magazine here, this issue came out April 30th. Well, it says, please display until April 30th, 2016. Uh, shit, it's a ten dollar magazine. I fucked up. So I finally had to buy it, man. You know, cause the front cover said the divine feminine on it, and so I had to do it. And in this uh, magazine, page twenty-eight. Uh, no, no, no. It starts on page twenty-seven, but on page twenty-six there is an image of Our Lady of Loreto, Lanzo Torinisi, Italy. And it is a picture of the Divine Feminine and the Divine Child, both as black-skinned or dark-skinned. The, um, the background is laced with blue curtains, um, sitting on top of a particular table. Uh, it's an altar there, flowers, looks like lilies, dandelions in a basket. And there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Unbelievable, there's 15 candles. Now, the 15 candles I know now are relating to the 15 nityas of uh, uh, representative of the moon phases and also representative of the uh, attributes of the divine goddess Lalita uh, Traipusun Hari. I believe that's the name. Um, it's not, it's, 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 it is Lalita. And she is the mother, the divine mother of the nega, okay, the nega spirituality. But anyway, um, okay, over her head she has stars. Uh, she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stars. Clearly representative of the twelve zodiac signs or twelve uh, brain receptors that are compacted and filled with dark or melanin. And then she has what looks like a gown. I mean, I don't know what it's brown and and uh, coppery looking, light tan, coppery, another symbol of melanin. And if I'm not mistaken, she has uh, seven symbols on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Clearly, there's one at the bottom. Uh, the, the basket of flowers is hiding it, but you can clearly see the edge of it uh, on the, the left side. Uh, now in this, um, hmm, that's very strange. Uh, in this article, seems like my damn lines were disappearing. In this article, uh, they, they, they get it in. It's called Darkness and the Divine Feminine by Holly Bellebuano, Caving the Pineal Gland and the Great Mother. I just find that extremely, extremely amazing. Uh, the Black Madonna, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of the Hermits, and Our Lady of Montserrat, or Montserrat, are statues that depict not only a black-skinned goddess, but more critically, a dark feminine, a dark divine feminine. Not only is her skin dark, but her identity is intentionally and symbolically dark. Reminds me of the Veil of Isis. Darkness is the characteristic associated with the feminine in traditions around the world. In traditional Chinese medicine, female is dark, moist, soft, and yielding. Uh, the yang. In Ayurveda, feminine-like qualities are dark, insta instable, wet, and soft. Now, the word here, instable, is reminiscent of the chaos. And we already know that the divine feminine aspect of chaos, one of the ancient samajas of that was Ta'at, or Tiamat. Uh, the great mother, okay, the one who gives you the sense of self, that's, that's what I like to say, 
um, she has a part in here called the duality of thought. Uh, the early concept of the divine feminine suffered a great split. Originally, she embodied every concept, birth giver and destroyer. She of the abundant crops and she of the famine. She was both he and she. And now, let me pause right there because in the Hebrew uh, and in the name, the secret name, Ayot Heit Vod Heit, the Hai or Ya is a feminine aspect uh, as well as the Vau. Uh, well, I will say that the letter H in Hebrew is feminine. So where do we get the word he? Where do we get the word hi? Hya. Or hya. When you ride on a horse. Hence the pale horse. That uh, the crystals comes back on. Um, let's see here. She was separated and she became just she. <laughs> and then the attributes separated and the great mother lost her wholeness forced to reluctantly divide her talents among lesser goddesses who were worshipped for only one thing rather than many. Artemis was the goddess of the hunt, Demeter was the goddess of crops, Aphrodite was the goddess of love. And who was the dark? Well, it was Hecate, one of the most ancient aspects of this goddess. This is not in, I'm pausing from the article again, um, is Hecate or Heca in ancient Kemet. Uh, one of her symbols uh, anamorphic symbols was a frog. She represented uh, many. Uh, whether it would, whether would, where Hecate actually meant a hundred, but it could. It, she represented many, as in like when the frogs mate and have many uh, tadpoles and shit like that. So, um, the book called The Red Goddess, I think, by one of these AA brothers in the, the occult uh, organization claims to say that Gerald Massey had it wrong aligning Sekhmet with the Red Goddess because the Red Goddess is actually a representation of the sex craze or the uh, sex craze that's going on in the modern times and I can understand what he's saying with that but I feel like sex just isn't sex as well it also represents an aspect of fire and water uh, air and earth and so um, that being so the body of the the, we'll say, the body of the ethereal or the third double with its seven consciousness points reside within the divine feminine bosom of the mother, which is really the mental, mental world. Um, and I can talk more on that later. Uh, so Hikati took this role, but really a womankind was granted darkness. All womankind, I mean, all womankind was granted darkness. This is continuing the article. Um, across the board, it became a feminine characteristic, while light became masculine, hence the sun, the moon was dark, okay, and with darkness came weakness and instability, hence when the god, age of God, Sut, fell, because him and his mother apparently caused chaotic situations when nobody could tell the time anymore based on the stars, they had to base the time on the planets um, and the movements of those planets and the sun within the constellations along with the phases of the moon. Okay. Thanks to darkness, not only the divine feminine, but all women have been seen as secondary to men in many cultures. Ain't that some shit? Darkness is a distinct, frightening, and very prevalent part of our daily lives. Think of melanin, think of darkness, think of frightening, think of terror. Think of terror. Think of ta uh, uh flesh, God in the flesh. It's very terrifying. Um, okay, uh, here we go. And we have a multitude of names for it, hence Hecate, has been cursed. Uncertainty, confusion, sadness, and grief. We call it fear and trepidation and danger. We have common phrases such as afraid of the dark and we use darkness to symbolize bad things. We continually try to escape darkness by installing light bulbs in every room and carrying cell phones with built-in flashlights. <laughs> Goes on and on and on. Uh, he's talking about the transition from one state of being to another. That is when darkness appears. That is the Divine Mother. It's very important. Very important. Um, these shifts and transitions are generally dark experiences. 
lacking clarity and instruction, leaving us confused, unclear, and frightened. That's a very key point right there. Very key point. That represents the revealing or the apocalypse or revelation because things are coming to life. People are becoming confused, chaotic, things are happening. And it's because the, this, this world is fucked up and it's time for a new a change. Uh, back to this. Yet here is the little gland. Here is this little gland, pineal gland, in our brains that help us perceive whether it is day or night, light or dark. <laughs> uh, does the hidden jewel of the brain light up? Jewel within the lotus in Hindu Vedanta. Does it light up when we need to perceive through the darkness? Mm. Not only helping us regulate sleep patterns, but also perhaps helping us connect with the higher part of ourselves. Excuse me. <clears throat> in this gland of darkness and light. This is this gland of darkness and light the seat of intuition? I truly agree with this. Uh, <coughs> um, she goes on to, to uh, say that darkness is in our lives uh, to explore those dark hidden places of spirituality and humanity that are so unnerving they are considered mythic. Very key. Is to descend into the body of the divine feminine herself. <laughs> and then she continues with another part of the article called the cavern. Because she's going caving. This is symbolic of the, the, the womb of the Divine Mother. It's a very beautiful picture in here that she has of a natural park in Spain. Canon del Rio Lobos. The cavern, the cavern symbolizes so much. The mythic of this, the internal process of thought itself, or thought and self, and the unknowable potential of life. All right. Um, aiming into the heart of the earth. I'm going to pause here because I'm hearing a whistle. Somebody might be coming to disrupt me, but I will continue this. The Dark Cave, the Divine Mother's womb. Peace. <laughs>